Next, we'll import two more images at the same time and fill the two remaining placeholder frames at the top of the front page. Now you'll notice at the upper right hand side of the interface, we have the layers panel. Now we haven't spoken about the purpose of it, but notice that with this document, all the content structured into two different types, text and images. In the layers panel, these two elements and anything else that appears in here form something that's a list known as a stack. Items that appear higher up in the list will appear in front of other elements that are lower down. And it's usually the case that your text always should appear higher than your images. Now we're going to bring in two photographs in this exercise. We're not going to edit text, so there's no need for it to be on screen. And if we wish to, we can hide it because everything that's stored in text has, like every other layer, a visibility toggle. It's the eyeball. And if I click on that, it makes the text disappear temporarily. So it will prevent us from clicking on something that we don't wish to. And from here, well, before we import anything into InDesign, always make sure that you left click at the side of the page so that nothing's active. If we still had the photograph active from the previous exercise, you know, if you bring in another image, it would simply replace this one that's in the frame at the moment. So click to the side, go to the file menu, and then go down the list and choose place. Takes us back to the links folder. I'm going to click once on robot.psd, hold down the shift key and shift and left click on Jackfruit, which is also a Photoshop document. Now with those two active, I'm going to go down to the bottom and click on open. Now, because we didn't have a frame active, InDesign shows us a preview of that image. So we can then think about what we want to do with it. We could either drop it into a placeholder frame or we could drop it somewhere into the layout at a size that we choose. It also tells us that there are two bits of data loaded into the cursor. So if you were to tap the right cursor key on the keyboard, it would cycle you through those two items. And you can choose which one of the images you want to work with first. So here it's set to the robot image. I'm going to deposit this image into one of the placeholder frames. Now you have to be very precise about where you position your cursor. Your cursor at the moment always works from the top left corner of that preview where the tiny little black triangle is. So to take this photograph of the robot and to drop it into this placeholder frame, just make sure that your top left corner of the preview is hovering over some part of the X and then left click. Every time that you left click to drop an image into InDesign, it will appear at its supplied size. That's why it looks a little bit too big for the container at the moment, but we can resolve that. I'll then hover my next preview of the jackfruit over the other placeholder frame over the X and then left click once more. Now, the first thing is I'll go back and click on the frame that contains the robot and use the same option as we did in the previous video. I'll click on fill frame proportionally and that for this scenario is absolutely fine and I'll click away. However, the other image of the jackfruit needs a little bit more work and we'll deal with that in the next exercise.